Dear Abby Normals, welcome to Deeply Disturbing Things, the podcast. I'm Macy. And I'm Naomi. And I'm Sarah. And, and we're that's three, Sarah. three anxious counselors who like to talk about deeply disturbing things. We're here to educate, enlighten, and entertain. And have fun. And we're going to do a mini episode tonight, just one topic. <laughs> Because I have COVID and I've been uh, locked in my house and coughing and not able to talk for the last week. So today so we're muting via Zoom also for that reason. Right. So I may mute myself on occasion if I start having a coughing fit. That's great that we didn't get COVID because we were you were right in our space. Right. It was our- it was after it was after that. And I, I know the person who ended up telling oh. me they got sick the day after I was there. So. Like, oh, yep. that's that's good for yeah. me and I then. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> You're out of the window. <laughs> oh man. So um I haven't done a crime topic for a while. So I'm gonna do a crime topic. Crime. 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 Murder. No. Nope. It is murder, actually. Oh. That's yeah, I guess not all crime is murder. I not all- no, there could be <laughs> yeah. a heist. <laughs> <laughs> bank robbery a bamboo there could be <laughs> counterfeiting lots of different <laughs> <laughs> but but mostly murder. Mo- yeah. mostly murder that's where my brain goes straight to murder right well, that tells us a lot about your brain sarah right it does <laughs> that's why you fit uh, in so well okay good <laughs> all right this is um a case from down in san diego have you heard of the murder case that involves spell casting? No. I lived in San Diego for a year in 2001, like 2001, 2002. It's yeah. fun to visit down there. It's it's quite toasty in the summer. But where in the world is Carmen San Diego? <laughs> he used to watch that. <laughs> Go on. I never watched that. That's all, San- I, that's all I have. In San Diego, I'm assuming. <laughs> I am getting into Dora the Explorer, though, for the first time ever. That's exciting. Because Stella's been watching it. Larry Miliette was arrested and charged with murder in October of 2021. This was a full nine months after his wife, Maya, went missing. He was arrested by a SWAT team at his house and uh, was arrested on charges of first degree murder and possession of an assault weapon. So during that whole nine months, her family had been very, very active doing, holding rallies, holding vigils, advocating for justice um, because they believed that Larry had something to do with this. Mm -hmm. So um, I was going to show you a picture of her, but I realized I can't turn around my laptop to show you because you're on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> We're connected. So maybe just Google a picture of my uh, Miliette, M-I-L-L-E-T-E, so that you can um, just have a person to to go along with the context, I think. Is important. Got it. Uh, So just a few days ago, on January 25th, after 10 days of preliminary hearings, the judge determined that there was enough evidence and ordered Larry to stand trial for the murder of Maya. So it took nine months to gather enough evidence. I see this Larry. Mm -hmm. Larry knew, Larry, Larry has a ponytail now. Oh. This happened in 2021? Or she disappeared. No, it happened in 2021. Yeah. Um, But he just a few days ago, it was, he's going to stand trial. That was determined just a few days ago. Larry knew that his wife wanted to end their marriage. So there's motive here. And Larry hoped to change her mind. And he hired multiple spell casters to try to do this. So First, he hired them to cast spells to help him win her over. And then 
he hired spellcasters to try to hurt her. <clears throat> oh. So Larry and Maya okay. are Filipino Americans and some Filipino individuals may hire spellcasters called mom baba rings um, to cast mm -hmm. spells either for yourself to help you or to you know have some kind of outcome to people that you might not like there's a huge online marketplace to purchase spells and hexes so not just in the realm of filipino americans um because i googled this i was like what what is this all about um you can get all kinds of spell casters for sale out there and we did an episode on hexes so mm -hmm. go back and listen to that if you want more details about that for many filipinos magic is a sincerely held belief so we want to acknowledge that I was like, well, what if I want to hire a spellcaster? So first I, I went to Fiverr, as one does. Yes. Fi Fiverr, I thought, was supposed to be everything's five bucks. I think that was the when it was first created. But I haven't been on there a while. <laughs> uh, Is it expensive because, now? <laughs> uh, well, spells will cost you 120 Fivers. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. That's a lot of Fivers. It's a lot of Fivers. So you can get a love spell cast on the person of your choice 125 bucks mm -hmm. you can retrieve a lover spell mm -hmm. so a lover who has strayed away from you 125 bucks oh. you can get your own protection spell 125 bucks that's the going right now <laughs> i guess on fiverr anyway which is now a misnomer mm -hmm. and then i so i specifically was like i want to find a filipino witchcraft website and so i found one and um I couldn't see the pricing. You had to like write in, but there was a note at the bottom that said, I don't cast black magic spells for others unless I see it as justified. You need to consult me first before we do so. Mm. So a little bit of ethics going on there. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> Back to our case between September, 2020 and January, 2021. Larry contacted spellcasters every day and sometimes multiple times a day. So Larry's spending a lot of money, a lot of time and energy on spellcasting. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to get help, trying, trying to get his wife to stay with him and not leave him. Um, so one text that he sent the spellcaster was, make her want to spend the rest of her life in the same bed. Oh, Another was make her want to realize we're meant together, meant to be together. So things started to take a turn because these, these weren't working. And so then he started asking things like, quote, can you hex to have her hurt enough that she will have to depend on me and need my help? Wow. She's only nice to me when she needs me or sick, maybe yeah. an accident or broken bone. Mm. A little misery here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The documents that were uh, released by the court do not name the specific spellcasters that Larry hired, but he was a frequent customer. Larry's wife disappeared just days after she phoned two family law firms to make an appointment. So she was pursuing divorce. Mm hmm. Maya has been missing since January 7th, 2021. So a little over two years now. Wow. Her body has not been found. Hmm. Maya was last seen in the couple's home on that day, January 7th, around 5 p.m. Two days later, her sister reported her missing. Her car was still at home and her phone went straight to voicemail. So family was getting concerned. Mm -hmm. And um, authorities say a phone maybe ran out of batteries, you know, maybe was destroyed. There could be many reasons for the phone not working. There's record of texts to Larry and Maya in the last days. So if you get involved in a crime, every text 
you ever wrote is well now be there it's just like yeah up on up on a powerpoint in the courtroom Mm -hmm. um every google search you've ever done they're gonna (laughs) release that information you better remember that naomi (laughs) it's a little bit terrifying (laughs) i know (laughs) i'm not gonna lie (laughs) so Text from Larry in these last days before she disappeared once said, I'm not right and I'm about to lose it. Hmm. And his Google search history on those last few days said, how to subliminally train your wife. Cool. How to subliminally. So like, okay. I, I'm curious what that, and I might have to search that. <laughs> <laughs> You want to use that information. I mean, what do you think, like, getting in the mindset here, what do you think is going on with old Lair in these last couple of days? I, I want to know. Desperate. <laughs> yeah, I want to know what what it was that she was, you know, in her mind was leaving him for. You know, why was she, does it say? There's an alleged affair. Hmm. Oh. But, you know, there's always more to it. Yeah, like, be an affair. Like some of these behaviors maybe that he was doing, like possessive, controlling, possibly. Um, and they were married, I think it said 20 years. So they're together for a long time. Oh, I mean, wow. Sometimes, you know, the spark dies out. and mm-hmm. Or it was all of this stuff was happening. And, you know, she was just already getting fed up, but was hanging in there. And then the affair was her reason to be like, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. out. I mean, from mm-hmm. what I was looking into she had been wanting to get out of the relationship for a, a while but larry would not allow it he want he seems very like he was possessive of her he wanted to control her i think at you know trying to get these spells going and trying to figure out how to subliminally train your wife i think he was felt like he was losing control, control. yeah and and was just very, uh, like you said, Missy, like just desperate, mm-hmm. you know? Well, like, because it's finally probably going to happen. And so, like, what do you do when when she's making the calls? Like, it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Maya's search history in those last couple of days included several related to divorce and child support payments. So there's you know, circumstantial evidence that she was trying to figure out how to leave him. I mean, I don't know a lot about the affair. Um, If that was serious or not serious, if they're planning on trying to be together or if that was, you know, um, just more of a casual thing. But Larry was not happy. Mm -mm. On the night that she disappeared at 9 57 p.m surveillance audio in the neighborhood recorded eight loud bangs and i listened to this on youtube and oh. it is creepy and disturbing to say the least i mean it sounds mm. like gunshots yeah and it's eight and so there's one and then there's a few in a row and then there's like this long pause and then more and so i mean of course my imagination is running wild like that's a lot of gunshots to be going on you know and seems excessive like what what were those other ones for because i'm assuming the first rounds were enough to kill her like what were those other ones all about Mm -hmm. was that rage or what was that Mm -hmm. like we talked about that before when if you're like an amateur murderer and you it's kind of like a panic thing where you just want to make sure that you don't know if you actually killed them and you don't want it to be like a halfway thing so then you just go overboard yeah kind of <clears throat> it's so loud this is recorded by another house in the neighborhood and you could hear it quite loud and clear so there's a part of me that's like evidence. this is not I don't know. I mean, you know, first degree murder, that's premeditated, but you got to know everyone's going to hear gunshots in your house, eight gunshots. So that part, 
is um interesting to me well, that, and that, that sounds... would be the mode that you would do in at home in the neighborhood well and that i mean then i'm assuming there's bullets i'm assuming there's debris i'm assuming there's mess um that's a lot yeah so that speaks to me as a little less premeditated it's from my you know amateur sleuth mind and like did they have a family gun or did he go and buy this for this you know like did did he already own one or not he he had i think he had more than one gun that okay. he'd legally purchased but i didn't look into that part too much mm-hmm. in the um audio recording that you listen to there's either somebody crying out after the first bang oh. or it's a high-pitched dog barking it's hard to tell i listened to it a few times because the first time I listened to it, I thought it was a human crying out. But then when I listened to it again, I thought it was a dog barking. So it's difficult to tell, but it's very disturbing to listen to either way. Um, That's some pretty hard evidence there that that happened the night she went missing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but all the evidence is circumstantial. All of this. Mm-hmm. Because... Yeah. You know, there's because they didn't find anything. There's no body, which I'll talk about in a little bit. There was no and like witness. House was cleaned up. Well, the atter- there's an attorney that the family hired that got into the house a few days obviously. later. He said there was a giant hole in the wall that had been recently patched over, and the freezer was missing. <gasps> this is we did one um where remember where there was like the burn pit and like all the stuff like there was freshly moved burn but like there's no evidence because it's been burned but isn't the burn pit that's new (laughs) enough yeah oh that was um right that's the our our fan jesse called in about that i think that was where she lived in alabama Right, right, yeah, right. That was suspect to say the least. Mm-hmm. So then the free freezer came back because evidence removed from the home included a freezer. So this is really sad. Prosecutors believe the couple's three children, ages five, 10, and 11, were home at the oh. time their mother was murdered and mm-hmm. during the entire time that Larry worked to dispose of the body. Oh, mm-hmm. man. I mean, those gunshots are loud. Like, what what was going on? Like, did they wake up? Were they asking questions? I'm just, I have, well, my mind is like to. wild with this scenario, how that would work. Well, and maybe he was, maybe why she was ramping up calls as well as maybe he was getting more erratic in general. Maybe his, um, you know, just his mental health was deteriorating and she that may have so I don't know maybe his kids are already scared yeah I wonder what if they when they um question the kids you know obviously they can't use leading questions but just asking them the general you know where Mm -hmm. were you what was going on uh, this night you would think Mm -hmm. that they could read that the kids were getting nervous or you know that based on how the kids were answering questions or if any of them could would have slipped up you would think that like this maybe was- they're threatened you're thinking like to be quiet by the dad or don't say anything well did they they didn't say anything i haven't found out a lot about the the kids you know mm, which it, makes sense they'd yeah. want to protect them but right. yeah. the prosecutors have said that they were home they believe they're home and that mm-hmm. not only during the murder but while larry was doing whatever work he was doing to oh i just found pictures of the of the the kiddos Hmm. it's a cute family it's like two two girls like i don't know under the age of what 11 like there's like maybe i don't know this (laughs) at 7 11 and what four maybe yeah and so larry has been trying to like his whole thing is she left on her own you know, and then the prosecutors are trying to counter with, no, she would never leave her children. And so a lot, some of the um, witnesses that they brought in 
we're really speaking to witnessing how she was such a great mother and she was so full of life and bubbly mm-hmm. and energetic and that she wouldn't just leave her disappear in the night and leave her her kids like that like that mm-hmm. would not happen and she left her car like where how how was she walking down the street getting an uber like mm-hmm. there'd be evidence of that you know yeah yeah this doesn't make any sense oh they are a cute family the da in the case said there's often a like a triggering event in homicide cases and in this case it was the call that larry's wife made to the divorce lawyer and larry knew about this call because he texted his boss about it Mm. that his wife was you know contacting divorce lawyers and this is just right in the days Mm -hmm. before she disappeared yeah because he was trying so desperately to put the spells and to keep her and it wasn't working mm-hmm. and then that was you know she made that call to the divorce lawyer and he's like well not nothing i was doing has worked yeah. and this is if it. i if i can't keep her no one can mm-hmm. right. it's that possessiveness yeah because he even got to the point of well maybe <laughs> she's hurt even so it, the violent factor was mm-hmm. even amping up yeah <laughs> at first it was just make her love me and then it was like okay hurt her so she can't leave and then she'll be dependent on me i mean but that wasn't her turn so then yeah, yeah obviously doesn't care about her mm-hmm. yeah it's it's just a twisted way to look at a relationship mm-hmm. it's really you know very self-centered it's mm-hmm. about my needs not oh i'm gonna have this person i supposedly love break a bone like yeah right it, or the kids yeah you're not even thinking about the kids either yeah, yeah. Um, it's so convoluted mm-hmm. so well, that's if he did it right this is all allegedly i mean we have a justice system that we will follow it's not us <laughs> <laughs> i am not the judge or the jury we we are just uh discussing it so these messages you know to the spellcasters really started to ramp up and uh one closer to when maya went missing said please punish maya and incapacitate her enough so she can't leave the house it's time to take the gloves off Mm. yes and another point he requested a curse on his wife so that she would get hurt on the family dirt bike so that she would be stuck on bed rest. So that really does is sort of like the misery book with the super fan that yeah. is going to ho- hobble somebody that she loves to, to keep them and, mm-hmm. and really just not understanding how that like is actually counterintuitive, like hurting the person you say you love, like that's not love. No. And um Larry's messages to the spellcasters in these final in this well, the day that Maya was parted missing pivoted to targeting from targeting his wife to targeting the alleged lover mm-hmm. who Larry blamed for you know all these problems and and why the marriage was failing and then on the afternoon uh that she went missing he messaged i think she wants me to snap and i'm shaking inside ready to snap larry is not taking responsibility for Mm -mm. his role in a lot of this situation well Mm -hmm. and i wanted to talk to you all about i mean i know spellcasters are not mandated reporters but i i feel like as a spellcaster would you report that you feel like something bad is about to go down to protect people if you're a dark magic person then no probably not but except for that one who seemed like they were trying to be a little ethical they're trying to have a code of conduct technically all of his stuff is about what he's asking them to do it's not technically him saying he's going to do anything Oh my gosh, I just thought of something. I wonder if there's ever been a case where 
a, a spell seemed to work and the spellcaster went to trial has that ever happened i don't know <laughs> like what if he i didn't like, know messaged that. in have her have an accident on a dirt bike and like it just happened that day mm. and, and that the word got out would that spellcaster be culpable but then the spellcaster wouldn't have it'd be murder it'd be for not... hire hmm? it'd be murder for hire or like right yeah broken ankle so what... for hire yeah. So what do those guys get charged with when they're found out? But I mean, how do you, I mean, there's so many implications. If that was proved to be true, then you would have to admit magic is real. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is interesting. That is. Right. Well, in your, okay. So is magic real? Is this how we're solving this? <laughs> <laughs> I think if a spellcaster is convicted that basically says yeah magic's right all right let's do Bruce. this <laughs> let's do this authorities obtained surveillance footage from january 8th so the morning after she was last seen that showed larry repositioning his lexus at 5 58 a.m backing it into the garage so that no video could capture whether a body was put in the back of the lexus or not Mm -hmm. I mean that's weird you know like why are you backing your le like it was probably facing the garage and then he probably pulled mm -hmm. it out turned it around and backed it in like why mm -hmm. are you doing that mm -hmm. Larry right suspect so that was at what did I say 5 57 so then at 6 45 a.m so um a little bit more than 45 minutes later Larry drove off leaving the kids at home and didn't return home for 11 hours and 21 minutes later or maybe he took the kids I don't suspiciously know. I, I long didn't see that i didn't see what was going on with the kids it seems like about the right amount of time to go and bury a body it back. seems about the right like if you're going to the desert right yeah. like how long from san diego to vegas desert sarah you're from vegas tell us about six hours mm -hmm. so oh but then uh, that's getting back short. that wouldn't work is there like a like a desert suburb that would be closer <laughs> like Probably. a four hour out away I mean, no it's, it's six hours to las vegas but there's plenty of desert in between so it's like yeah in between so you could, anywhere between there yeah <laughs> so you could get out there find a secluded desert dig because you have to dig yeah it a lot, that's probably enough time and then get back in 11 hours okay yeah well how long does it take to dig up or dig down how long does it I, let me google this and see how many flags i get on my name by the new <laughs> how long does it take to bury a body and how long does it take oh. to oh no well according to um some fictional shows that i respect like dead to me and, oh my gosh um, search one. party it's a lot harder to bury a body than you think it says it can stand oh funeral what are these people <laughs> i tried to bury a little wooden trunk in the park for my son's birthday i tried to do like a treasure hunt and i couldn't get it's more hard. than a few inches i ended up hiding it in a bush i've tried planting flowers <laughs> can plant. i it's there's work. there's a list so i put how long does it take to bury a body and it gives me funeral stuff you know good job google and then it yeah. uh in the drop down though, other recommended, it says, how long can a body be kept after death? Another one said, how long can a body be refrigerated before burial? How long can a dead body be kept in a freezer? <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. They're coming for you, Macy. <laughs> if you hear a knock at the door, you know why. I'll just tell them, I'll give you my COVID to go away. <laughs> go away, I'll cough on you yeah so larry's googling some weird shit too though i mean that's part of the circumstantial evidence <laughs> not like me <laughs> just <laughs> in a separate way right. And, right. and for it to be circumstantial evidence it really has to be contextual to the situation mm -hmm. uh, larry told investigators he's been at the beach all day because that's but what when... you do the day your wife goes missing like you don't you don't because he doesn't he supposedly doesn't know where his wife is that day right well he said she just went off on her own 
So he goes to the beach on the day that his wife is gone. Yeah. And uh, when investigators asked him to show the, them on the map, which be she couldn't really do that. So. Oh gosh. Mm -hmm. So you well, might be he wondering. doesn't he doesn't want to show him where he buried the body. <laughs> I don't think it's at the beach. I believe it's got to be out of town, right? It's in the I desert. Mean, that's what I'm thinking. Because it's accessible in that amount of time to get out. I think I just think it. I think it probably takes way longer to dig that and have it hidden and have it off of out of the way. I think it's probably closer than we'd think. Closer. But I think the closer you are in the town, the more you risk having somebody see right. you. But this whole thing hasn't, I mean, shooting a gun in your home in a neighborhood, like that's not too smart. He's obviously not taking precautions. No, I, I don't think he's thinking clearly. I think he's an emotion brain for sure. Why did the fam why does the family think it was him? Like, why are they putting pressure and saying that they know it's him just because of how possessive he was and just knowing him yeah too. you know she'd been mm -hmm. unhappy in the marriage for a bit you know um since like 2020 and so they knew what was going on maybe they've seen some violent behaviors you know that he's had or who knows what yeah, yeah. so it was interesting like um like when she first went missing like her family was immediately like what did larry do and his family was like, let's find Maya. She's missing. You know, it was very mm -hmm. split in the approach. Hmm. Yeah. So you might be wondering, how can you file first degree murder charges without a body? Because hmm. I wondered that too. So this is so fascinating. The deputy DA in this case explained that the Charles Manson case set a precedent for this. Hmm. And so from the documentation from the People versus Manson in 1977, it says, the fact that a murderer may successfully dispose of the body of the victim does not entitle him to avoid prosecution. Mm -hmm. This is one form of success for which society has no reward. Production of the body is not a condition precedent to the prosecution of murder. I thought that was so interesting. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of the murder case where they, um, the guy had put his wife inside of that barrel or what, like that big truck barrel thing, but they couldn't find her for a long time but they're pretty sure he did it. I don't, yeah. What case was that? I, I'm trying to remember. It was, it was. Was that Scott family. Peterson? Oh, was that? Maybe. That's an interesting up. case. That would be one that, that was... I would cover on the podcast. I was thinking about today. It's like, if I'm going to cover like a murder case, which is obviously, you know, true crime is a true yes. experience for some family. Like mm -hmm. there has to be a reason I'm covering it. Mm-hmm. And for this one, I was originally, I mean, unfortunately, there's murders all the time in this country. You know, there's been a, a, a mass shooting every day this year in this country. No. So there's way too much murder and killing. Um, and I don't want to cover things just, you know, to be exp exploitative or like, Mm -hmm. a graphic like there has to be something and this one it was the spellcasters thing that was like wait what interesting yeah yeah i was like what is this about and it kind of drew me in and then it it was i Scott wanted Lee. to learn more about like like i want to know about the the people like the people the victims and like what what is their story what was happening with them and hopefully shine a light on them as humans you know and honor mm -hmm. honor their memory that way so it was Scott Peterson and his okay. disappearance of Lacey Peterson. Yeah. Yeah. I re remember that being mm -hmm. very long. 
mm-hmm. like a long drawn out thing yeah they couldn't very fucked up was there a baby involved at some point i think so too yeah yeah i'd have to dive into it but yeah i think that would be a good future topic it would. I mean, especially when there's like a lot of psychological stuff that we can like yeah. wrap our tentacles around <laughs> So can you say that one more time about somebody can be, is it charged with murder without no. the body? Yeah. Like you That's don't need to know. The, on the Charles Manson case right? set the precedent for this. Based on evidence without and, a body. And it's evidence about. Without a body, not just suspicion. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's circumstantial evidence in this case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. where the precedent lies. And and the whole foundation of this is that we should not reward a killer because they were so savvy in hiding a body. Mm-hmm. Like there's no benefit to society from that. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so you you shouldn't, you don't need to produce a body to prosecute for murder. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know that. I'd always thought, you know, maybe from watching too much crime shows, they that had to find the body to make ha- it. There had to be a body. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if that makes sense. Like no body, no charges, or something. You know. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's like rewarding them for. Oh yeah, you. Yeah. yeah good enough for cleaning it up so well, but yeah, good on you. You're so smart. And so this precedent yeah. from way back then really said, no, we're not doing that. We're there's yeah. no reward to society <laughs> yeah. for re- like honoring success for hiding a body. And that yeah. helps for like old cases. So like if they find new evidence or say new DNA evidence comes out, it helps them be able to still prosecute versus, hmm. well, it's, you know, it's too old. Yeah, yeah. And so prosecutors say the fact that Maya's body has not been found is actually evidence that death was caused by criminal means because it's highly unlikely that a person suffering natural death would not be found her own body right Mm -hmm. you'd find her somewhere someone would find her and so when larry went out that day for his beach trip his Mm -hmm. 11 plus hours beach trip he did Mm -hmm. not take his phone with him Mm. who does that People that don't want to be tracked by their phone. Yeah. (laughs) Right. I mean, even, um, you know, the, I can't remember his name, but the guy Kohlberger, you know, Mm -hmm. who's the suspect in our local quadruple homicide, Mm -hmm. even him as a criminology student took his phone with him. Mm -hmm. He turned it off while he was at the house. Just during that time. Just during that window. But you know, I mean, that does speak to some suspicion to me. That you right. would a lot about. of suspicious things going on with Lair. With Lair, I Bear. mean, if I drive off on a big day and you know, I realize I don't have my phone. Twenty minutes out, I will turn around and get my phone. I will well, go. Back. And nobody spends eleven hours on the beach. I'm sorry, like it's <laughs> four four hours. You're toast. You're done. You want to go home. Like it's a <laughs> good point. And there was no was uh, he sunburned? Was he sunburned? Yeah, what oh my gosh, sun yes. <laughs> oh, and this is January. Like, what are you doing out there? January yeah, 7th, alibi. January 8th. None of this makes sense. Did he have aloe vera on him? <laughs> I want to I want to see the third degree burns. Right. <laughs> I mean, this is I, not looking good. He could have got Lair. burned out in the desert, though. <laughs> Just that's true. Desert. That's <gasps> well, but true it, sarah he could have said this is proof i was at the beach <laughs> look at my my sunburns so he went and did this during the daytime yeah he left his house at 6 45 a.m and didn't return for but 11 the, and hours the, and 21 minutes later the gunshots happened that night mm-hmm. and then the night before at nine something like right before 10 o'clock so i'm concerned that's a five-year-old like you're leaving your 10 and 11 year old to watch a five-year-old all day i mean that's not good parenting i let skylar start being alone when he was like nine ish for a short periods of time uh, but not babysitting 
or at least not for that long, unless there was some major crisis you were. No, it might be like, I'm going to go outside. Like I'll be in the yard, watch yeah. you know, your brother for five minutes. And wouldn't he take the kids with him to the beach? If he was really yeah. going to the beach. Yeah. It's just, none of it makes any sense. And so that's why there's suspicion. That's why there was suspicion from the family right away. Like this doesn't make sense. Like this is not our our family's character to not answer your phone calls, to just disappear, leave your car at home. You know, you're it's a dedicated mother. It was the daughter's birthday two days later too, and there was a big family event planned. Aww. She was very family oriented, and um, just hearing from the family was it was really heartbreaking. Like they they want their daughter bring her home like that is closure like they they want to know where he what he did with the body they want the story and so there actually is a possibility of a plea deal um that could potentially happen if like so larry would get a reduced sentence Mm -hmm. if he revealed what where she is but not only that but like what happened like details around it which would help give the family that closure so that would be like the reason for that for allowing that reduced sentence to mm-hmm. give the family closure because gosh I just that's heartbreaking to not know like where your person is like you you know we we get attached to that physical body and we want to lay them to rest you know it's part of the closure yeah and I'm even surprised that Larry it wasn't you know you hear a lot of the times where um you know a husband or uh even a wife more so you hear like the husband will like shoot the family and then kill themselves and so Mm -hmm. for the fact that he just killed her but then Mm -hmm. it's like he yeah it was the whole idea of if I can't have her, nobody can have her, but I can still go on living now. Yeah, and that's true. That's kind of, yeah, weird. Like, what does that like say about him? Yeah, he just wanted her as a possession. Like, the humanity didn't matter to him anymore. Yeah. I wonder if he, like, that started because it would be like, um, like losing face. You know, if he had some measure of success and like part of that was having this beautiful wife and family image Mm -hmm. and her leaving him would somehow make him look bad, possibly not be as successful. Like maybe Mm -hmm. that was a measure of success for him. Yeah. Like a failure. And that could feel life threatening psychologically. Yeah. Well, and he may have built up a lot of dependency on her over the last 20 something years. Um, and maybe didn't, so even though he seems like it seemed rushed, right? Like it wasn't well thought out. So maybe he didn't really know what he was going to do after that point. He just acted on that part. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm here. Sorry. I was having a coughing fit in the background. No, I figured it all. Well, that's all I got. Any last comments? So, okay. So right now it's pending. Where is it sit right now? Right now it sits that he's going to stand trial. Okay. The prosecution was able to present enough evidence that the judge said, yes, he will stand trial for these two charges, first degree murder and possession of an assault weapon. Okay. And so right now he's pleading not guilty to these charges so we'll we'll see what happens forthcoming i mean this mm-hmm. all these 10 days of preliminary hearings was just presenting enough evidence so that the judge would would be able to proceed with circumstantial evidence right and during this time he still has the ability to or they we don't know if they're going to offer a plea deal but hoping for that or they will um that's just to- conjecture you know how people like talk on these talk shows they bring in experts like could he get a plea deal potentially yeah he yeah. says yes he potentially could in this case for this reason mm-hmm. so we'll see so, 
and they presented, you know, um, like other cases where a plea deal was given to mm-hmm. reveal, you know, where what happened with the individual's body. Because it's important to families. Yeah, well, and, and that's to me where we'll kind of see, you know, is this mental health or is this narcissism? Is this like a, um, you know, what 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 is behind his drive for what happened if if he did do it? Because yeah. if he, I don't know, because if he takes a plea deal, it's kind of like an ego thing to me. Like, oh, okay, so you're willing to do that because you care about yourself so much right and i'm curious if they're going to bring any of those spellcasters in and say you're an accessory to this because you were ramping up to do these spells that would harm this person also you didn't report this i mean i guess they're not mandated reporting <coughs> yeah they don't have to you know go but if this, if like they that. agreed to do a spell that would cause harm to her and harm did come to her are they culpable? I mean, legally, probably not, but <laughs> they can't really prove that. They can't prove. But what they can say circumstantially is for him, his behavior was showing a pattern of behavior that led up to her disappearance. Yeah. Yeah, like for it, sure. Is that something that someone might do before they murder someone? Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's clear homicidal ideation that was demonstrated Mm -hmm. i mean but could someone do that and not murder someone sure sure yeah yeah none of the texts that they printed out were like kill her right it wasn't that explicit it was like break a bone or Mm -hmm. have an accident you know it was that kind of thing does tell you though that one he's smart enough to know that there's a line like that he can't message these people and ask them to murder her (laughs) that's a whole different um account you sign up for right right yeah (laughs) yeah. Mm -hmm. i mean because he could have he could have sent those things um um if he didn't understand truly what could be reportable yeah he did but he didn't yeah i don't think that they're they don't have to report that i mean no but if he if he disclosed like i want you to murder someone that's someone's probably going to be more likely to be like okay this is an issue versus hey can you through magic make her hurt so she stays home (laughs) like that sounds less threatening than Hmm. i want her dead yeah i mean if i was a spellcaster i I don't know if I'd want to get involved in like physically hurting people like that. You're a good witch. <laughs> yeah, it just seems like for $125. <laughs> some people may do a lot of things. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. That's true. I guess never say never. <laughs> I mean, I'll say never to this one, but. <laughs> Well, good topic. <laughs> All right. Well, if you didn't listen to our last podcast, I um, it answered definitively the question, do eggs come out of a chicken's butt? And you can decide if you want maggots to treat your wound that your uh, captor places on you through a hex. That's true. And yeah. if you want to financially support us, be our patron on Patreon. It's only a dollar. Thanks. Until next time. Oh, yes. Until next time. Be careful what you Google. Um, Only ask spellcasters to cast good spells. I Don't mess that. with dark magic. And if you're a spellcaster yourself, maybe create your own code of ethics. I feel like it's very karma-ish. You know? Guidelines are good. Yeah. Don't put bad stuff out there because it's going to come back to you. Spell is three. Yeah. Hefty disclaimer. (laughs) (laughs) Bye. Bye.